Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Champion Spotlight. Today, we have a great guest all the way from Indiana. I mean, it's virtual, so whatever, but he's from Indiana. So I am Dr. Megan Brown. I am the creator of Raise Your Game. It's a physical, mental, nutritional, and goal-oriented program to help become a champion in life. So my whole thing is I want to get different champions in life that I think are doing awesome things out in the community and share with you guys on what they're doing. So a little background on Jamal. He is Mr. Me Too. He is a motivational teacher, certified youth specialist, advisor and CEO of Beauty for Ashes Incorporated. The purpose of his organization is to first empower, then address the needs of youth and adults by providing character building life skills and etiquette training to prepare them for a sustainable life. The former professional basketball player has found success beyond sports by teaching others how to succeed despite their current or past experiences with proven principles and steps that allowed the former three-time dropout to push through the noise and complete his college degree after walking away from school over 24 years ago. Mr. Me Too is working on completing his first book, which is called What Happens When the Dream Doesn't Come True? You Dream Another Dream. Um, also speaking at the virtual schema conference and starting a podcast called Get Your Head in the Game. So Jamal, thank you so much for being here. I am a huge fan of yours and we recently connected and we've been talking ever since. So tell the people who you are, what you like to do, where you're at. Well, thank you. Thank you again for having me. It's been an honor and a pleasure uh, to, to first meet you. And then, like you said, we've been talking ever since. And so to get to know you, uh, to know your heart and you know what you're passionate about and to find even though two different sports lacrosse basketball but we still have the same passion uh, yep. about seeing uh, athletes go from where they are to to the maximum you know results and to get where they want to be uh, which is for all of us is to be successful in whatever field or whatever you know sport that we're in uh, for me uh it's really just been uh, kind of plugging away at, at helping people. Uh, all of my jobs has been around human services, social services. And so I've worked in corrections. I worked in nonprofits. I worked in mental health institutions. But uh, one thing that uh, as a basketball player, I played, was able to go overseas. Uh, career got cut short due to injury. Uh, none of us expect going into sports that we'll ever get hurt. We think that we're invincible. We think that it's going to last yeah. forever. And so most of us don't prepare for life after sports. And I feel victim to that. Uh, I, I so wish that that slogan more than the athlete would have been around when I was playing because I truly thought that that was it for me, that ba it was basketball or bust. I'm not going to do anything else, nor do I want to do anything else. This is it for me. This is my blissful place. This is heaven for me. Uh, and so I broke my kneecap wasn't able to play anymore. And so now it's, what do I do now? I didn't go to college to kind of prepare myself to be a doctor, a teacher, a lawyer, any of that. I went to college to have another platform to be seen so that I could reach my ultimate dream, which was to make it to the NBA or play professionally. Uh, those things didn't happen how, you know, I, I thought I was able to play professionally, but I had the injury. And so now I have to get a job. And when you've done something for so long, and now someone asks you to shift and say, okay, now do something else. You know, what do I want to do? What do I like doing? I've never put time or effort into doing anything else but basketball. Yeah. And so I had to do some soul searching and I had to try to, you know, begin to figure out what is it that, that I may like to do that could bring me the same joy that basketball gave me. And that's hard because basketball gave me some of my greatest moments and so now how do I find something that can make me, you know, have that bounce in my step, to make me smile, to make my heart flutter, or to give me butterflies as big as watermelons in my stomach before a game? Like, what can give me that? And I soon found out that it was working uh, with young people and helping young people. And as I worked with young people, and it eventually matriculated to young adults and matriculated to adults, I found that as I would have discussions with these young people, and they would begin to share their story after I would open myself up and I would share my story about, you know, growing up without my dad and growing up, you know, in Chicago and gangs and drugs and, you know, just everything that, 
you know, up to that point that was my life, I would openly share the good and the bad. And then they would then feel, because I would make that connection to let them right. see that we're, we're, we're not so different. Like we have a lot of similarities and just because I'm here and I'm sitting on this side of the desk doesn't mean that I ain't did nothing. And so it- now I got that common ground with them. And so then they will begin to share their stories. And I oftentimes found myself saying, guess what? Me too. And that's yeah, I was going to say, is that where it came from? from? That's awesome, where it came awesome. from. <laughs> I was wondering, but I thought that's where we were heading. So. Yeah. And so it's not, not to diminish the Me Too movement and, you know, none of that. Yeah, of course. But I was doing it my entire life that I've gone through the things that I've gone through to even be able to tell somebody, guess what, me too. And so it's, it started June 15th, 1972, which is my birthday. I just celebrated my 40th birthday. I know, I know. Happy birthday, so, happy yeah, birthday. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and so it's been a culmination of everything that I've gone through and I've been able to overcome uh, to get me to where I am now, where I can honestly say that I'm a subject matter expert in overcoming obstacles. Uh, the definition that probably up until maybe about 2015, that if you asked me what was the definition of resilient, I would have told you the, the ability to bounce back. Well, from 2015 till now, I've blown that definition out of the water because if the definition of resiliency is to bounce back, then I only bounce back to whatever knocked me down. Yep. No, for true. me now, resiliency is the ability to bounce forward. It knocked me down. I learned from it. And then I went past whatever it was that where I felt like was my threshold or what was my barrier. And so for me now, that's my thing. I have the ability to bounce forward. Whatever it is, I find a way. Uh, do I always like it? No, none of us do. <laughs> none of us like going yeah. through that, that hard stuff or that yucky stuff. But I've grown to embrace it. Uh, because I see the results of everything that I've gone through. You know, I've always been able to come out on the other side of it better. And I know that, you know, there's some things that I probably shouldn't have gone through. It was, but that was me making bad choices and bad decisions. Most of my life, the things that I've had to go through that were hard, man, the victory was on the other side of that. And so uh, yeah. I, I embrace that now. And that's, you know, and that's a huge thing with, you know, like we've talked about before and even before this, the champion's mindset is completely, you know, taking those adverse times in your life and taking those hard times and challenges. And like you said, I love how you said that, like, you know, bouncing forward, not, you're not just bouncing back to where you started because then what was the point? What was the point of going through those hardships, you know? So in every, every aspect of our lives, when we're having those hardships, we need to, create that reality for ourselves of like this is happening for me it's not happening to me it's happening for me and um you know i think you said it great so that's awesome so is that kind of how the whole mission behind mr me too started it it my my mentor would say accidentally on purpose (laughs) i think that this was god's calling for me but i accidentally stumbled upon it because when when basketball was taken away from me now I have to do this whole self-discovery. And I knew who I was with a basketball in my hand. My nickname is Sid. Right. So I know I know who he is, but I had kind of forgotten who Jamal was. And so I had to go back and I had to get back in tune with who Jamal was and find out what Jamal likes and, and, and what, what other things. Uh, and so my book, that whole thing, even with that, God gives us in life a ton of dreams. But it's us. We choose to just focus on the one dream. And we focus on that dream and we put everything into that dream. And when that dream doesn't come true, we fall apart and we become depressed. We become disappointed. We, we, you know, we, we lose it. And it's like, but wait a minute, that wasn't the only, I can say that now, but when I was in it, I'm like, oh man, that's the hard part. it, It was over. And so my life, became it was like I pressed pause on life because my dream didn't come true. Yeah. And it's like wait and, and and God's looking down at me like son, that ain't the only dream I'm I giving gave you all you these more. other opportunities. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, I've gave I've given you a multitude of dreams. You just chose to only chase after that one. And what yeah. I'm learning about dreams, the reason why dreams don't come true is because we don't one, we don't fully 
like plan out or think about what making that dream come true, what what all it takes to make a dream come true. Yeah. But then absolutely. once you see everything that comes with making a dream come true, are you committed to do all of those things? Exactly. That's why people dreams don't come true. I know that for a fact through my own lived experiences. Like the NBA could have been a reality for me, but there were some things that came with going to the NBA that I didn't fully map out. I didn't know that all of that stuff came. With. I just thought that I become really good at basketball. The NBA was going to be a reality for me, and that's not how that right. works. Right. And then when okay, you're that good. You get there. Do you have what it takes to stay there? Those are the other things that come with sports and careers and you know music and. Do you have what it takes to not just get there, to stay there? And I think that's why ultimately dreams don't come true because we don't, one, we don't, we don't lay it all on the line and find out when we go to make a cake, Betty Crocker and Duncan Hines tell us exactly what we need. <laughs> and if you skip a yeah, step, yeah. it's not it's a gonna cake. Be a it's not going to look like what's on the front of that box. <laughs> exactly. The same exactly. thing goes with your dreams. And so you need, to, you need to find out every ingredient that goes into that dream and then now is are you are you gonna sit there and are you gonna you don't have a mixer you don't have a blender are you gonna stand there with that spoon and mix it how it needs to be mixed so it's not clumpy are you yeah. gonna put the two eggs are you gonna put the butter and the oil in are you gonna yeah. are you gonna put it in the oven and stay out of the kitchen you ain't gonna run and keep looking to make the cake drop those yeah. are all of the same things that go with the dreams and if you're not willing to do all of those things and then the most important thing with a dream is waiting. It's the way. That's the Most hardest of us, part. We want it. That's the hard. <laughs> that cake smells so good. The dream yep. looks so good. But are you willing to wait? Or are you going to try to speed up the process? Are you going to take a shortcut? Are you? And then even when the cake come out the oven, guess what else you got? You got to do some more waiting because now you got to let it cool off before we cool. put the frosting yep. on it. Yeah. But oh my my my, when you take a bite of that cake, when it's all done, it was worth the wait. And so yeah. if you really want to make your dreams come true, you got to do all of those things. And then you got to be committed and willing to sacrifice and surrender everything, your whole self. And you got to engulf yourself into everything that, that that dream, you know, is requiring you to do. Otherwise, you're wasting your time and you're going to be disappointed and it's not going to happen. Yeah. And that's a great way to phrase it, too. And, and, you know, a lot of people get to that point of, OK, I have this dream but they don't know what to do after that. And that's a great kind of, you know, segue into both of what we do, you know, physical side, mental side. And now, you know, I'm starting this, this raise your game program. You do things on your side as well. Um, and it's, it's about finding those people that will help you through the process that have either already been in it, know what it's like to be in it. Um, you know, that will be in your corner to help you get to where you want to go. So I think that's super important. I didn't have that. I think things would have been, had I had a me, yeah. things would have been different for me. But I, it was OJT for me. It was on the job training. Yeah. <laughs> so I was slipping, fall, skin my knee, I bumped my head. Okay, Same. I, I, I got yep. a knock. Trial by so fire. I know that, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, exactly. man, I wish I, wish I would have had a blueprint or I wish I would have had someone that, that had gone before me that I could have learned from. And I, But I also think, too, me – as brash and as angry as I was, I probably would have still, it would have still took me some time to listen. You do know it all because you've dominated or you've been so good for such a long time. And it really does feel like, what can you really tell me about? Yeah. yeah. You ain't even measured up. You ain't done none of this. Not for like a week. I've been doing this for some years and you're going to try to come tell me how I need to conduct myself and, man, get, and, and we get ourselves <laughs> in trouble. Uh, yes, and so that's I true. think that, you know, that, that's the problem, you know, with athletes. It's allowing those who've gone before you. No, I didn't make it to the NBA, but I didn't make it to the NBA not because I wasn't good enough. Yeah. Let me tell let me start by saying that. And that's the part that you need to understand because you're going to not make it to the NBA or the NFL or whatever it is that you're trying to do because I had that same attitude. And I remember when I wouldn't let anybody tell me anything. And there were yeah. certain people who had came into my life that were trying to tell me things, but man, whatever. But because you didn't make it, nothing that you say has merit or weight with me because you didn't make it. And I think we, we, we minimize those people and we miss out on great opportunities to learn Absolutely. some great skill sets and some great experiences that 
ultimately we don't have to go through if we allow them to be in our lives how they're supposed to be in our lives. Exactly. And that's my mission. Ball, yeah. I mean, you've, you said it great. And I think, you know, with everything that you're doing, you have a lot to offer people and I really hope that they reach out to you. Um, can you tell them a little bit about how they can reach out to you or how they can follow you? Absolutely. You can, you can catch me on IG at Mr. Underscore me underscore two. That's T O O underscore Indy. Or you can catch me on uh, LinkedIn at Jamal J E E R M A L. Mr. Me Too, Sylvester, S-Y-L-V-E-S-T-E-R. Uh, on any one of those platforms, uh, that's where I spend the most time. Uh, you can connect with me if you hit me in my DM. I will respond. Uh, go to my page. Go look at some of my previous posts and videos. Like, comment. Uh, let's engage in conversation because I truly feel like I went through what I went through, not for me. I went through what I went through for you. And so that's why I call myself Mr. Me Too. Absolutely. That's awesome. And we are definitely looking forward to your book release when that comes out. I will be one of the first and get a little auto in there so we can, we can look, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> um, are there any last words of encouragement, you know, champion mindset motivation that you want to leave with our listeners, our viewers? Um, if I can pass along anything that, that I've learned is uh, try to be as open uh, and objective uh, as you possibly can. Uh, even if you feel like you've mastered something, uh, become, have the mindset of being a lifelong learner. Uh, for me, I wake up every day with the intent, I'm intentional about learning something that I didn't previously know yesterday. And if you can do that every day, uh, I, I guarantee you that you may not be where you want to be, but you'll be more further along than you know, you would be had you not had that mentality. Uh, you know, by the inch is a cinch and by the yard is hard. And so I'm gonna inch my way to success and I hope that you inch your way to yours. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Me Too. You guys make sure you check him out, his Instagram, um, great content on there. And then find your way over to raiseyourgame.club to take the champions quiz. Mr. Me Too took it, so he knows how valuable it is. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys later. Thank you so much for being here.